here, the frugal crafter. I'm crafting in my craft room. It's actually, I'm not, well, I have my coat on, but I'm not absolutely freezing. It's 49 degrees. It's up from 47. I'm so excited. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about die cutting machines and platforms. So I get asked all the time through a lot of private messages on Facebook and emails and also in comments, what die cutting machine I recommend for a manual die cutter. Um, I have tried uh, a few different ones that my friends have had, but the only one I've really owned, I, I did get a uh, uh, revolution on clearance, but all other die cutters just seem like a toy to me after this one. This is the Big Shot by Ellison. It's now owned by Sizzix, and this is um, 10 years old. I'll show you the inspection sticker on the bottom. It says, oh, it's upside down. It says 1104-2005. So I don't know if you can read that. It's kind of sloppy, but this machine takes a licking and keeps on ticking, and I've used it just about every day since I got it. And um, the, the platform that it came with was this. So it's pretty beat up, obviously. I've used it a lot. And um, back when this machine came out, the only thing they had for dies were like the uh, the thinlets, which were thicker than the wafer thin dies, um, or the really thick steel rule dies, which were that were as thick as this. So as technology changed, they came up with new platforms. So this platform here has tabs. So if you have the first tab engaged, that'd be like for your embossing folders, and it would be um, be like what we have here, be able to the same thickness as the the platform that came with the um, the original. Big shots, okay? You see that's about the same. And then when you're using the really thin, wafer thin dies like these, um, you would have, you'd want both of these down so that it would give you enough pressure. And this thickness is what the, um, the magnetic platform is because the magnetic platform is designed to work with the uh, steel rule dies. Now, this platform was sent to me from consumercrafts.com. I'll put a link below. Uh, they sell this for, uh, I think, $29, and it's retail $39 um, if you want to check it out. And they have coupons and sales and stuff on top of that quite frequently. And um, they sent this to me as a thank you because I reviewed some dies that I bought at their store. So I want to thank them. And... Um, yeah, so that's that's why I have this. I didn't run out and buy it, but I am I am grateful to have it. All right, so to use the magnetic platforms, you're going to need your cutting pads. Now, the thing that you need to know about your cutting pads is that they have to be your bottom one has to be completely flat. So if you don't have flat cutting pads, I have a tutorial on how to straighten the really beat up ones with hot water, but they have to be really beat up to be able to straighten them with hot water. There are other tutorials on baking them, or I never had good luck with any other method other than just hot water uh, for straightening my pads out. But you know, just grab a grab a new pack if you if you get this, you are gonna need a flat a flat um, cutting plate, just so you know. This will work with the shims. If you need it, if you feel like you need a shim, it will work with a steel shim. This shim is from Cherry Lynn Designs. Um, you could also use um, steel, any sort of, um, you know, sheet metal that you might have. I think flashing might work if it's magnetic, but it's gotta be like steel, something that the magnet magnet vibes or whatever they're called. What are your little lines of magnetization can, can get through? And then you would put your flat plate on top. And it has to be flat because there needs to be contact. Otherwise, your dies are going to fall off. So then on top of that, would go your paper. Now I probably don't need a shim for these dies because they're very, very simple. In fact, I'll just take that shim right off because I don't think I'll need it. I will for the next thing I'm going to show you, but not for this one. So you put your paper down and then you're going to put your um, cutting dies down, cutter side down. All right. Now I tried to DIY my own by using like sheet magnets and it didn't it didn't work very well. It wasn't um, it wasn't strong enough. And this paper, how the paper even wants to pop up, it you know, it kind of wants to um, it kind of wants to move on me. Now I can make a frame this way. So let's say I want to make a picture frame to go in a scrapbook. See, I could take a couple of these nesting dies and go like that, make a frame and see it's not going to shift on me. Now you could do the same thing with tape. You don't have to have this magnetic platform, but it is handy if you, um, you know, if you want to work a little quicker or if that's been something that's frustrating you. I know, I know sometimes, um, I might get a little shaky in our in our old age. <laughs> in our old age, I somehow got on the the email list for AARP. I'm not sure how it's, but that's that's a story for another day. But anyways, sometimes you get a little shaky, and it's hard to keep everything everything um, layered up just right. So see, you can see how that is holding that. If I tip that, they're not going to fall off. All right. Now I don't like I said I don't think I need a shim with this. Now this this is a little bowed, but that's fine for the top. It's not going to hurt anything. You just need to make sure you have a flat surface to make the contact. I'm going to crank it through. It didn't feel very tight, so hopefully I'm going to crank it back through just to be sure. And that's another thing. You can crank it back through without it shifting because of the magnet. And let's see. Hopefully it cut well. <laughs> oh, yeah, it did. 
Okay, and these are the Doris dies. Now look at that cute frame I made. I think that's going to be so pretty on the scrapbook page. See, or on a card. So that's, you know, that's a really cool technique that you can do with these, um, with these dies. So there, and you know, very little waste because my dies didn't shift on me and I could cut several things at once because my dies didn't shift on me. Now, I don't have very many of these next things, but um, I know it's very popular from the, any of the stamp conventions I've gone to. People have been nuts over these. And that is the stamps that match the die cuts. And so this is a set from um, Local King. They have a lot, all their stamp sets of matching dies. They're really beautiful. Um, and I am going to use a shim because if you can see all these details, it's not going to cut very well without the shim. You need that little extra bit of tightness in the um, die cut machine. So I'm going to put my shim on there. And then I'm going to put my bottom plate, which is really flat. And then I'm going to put my paper down. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to... I know this part in here needs the extra push. So I'm going to have that so that's closer to the edge because you always have a little bit more push at the edge of your... Um, at the edge of the rollers in there where they connect to the edge, it's always a little bit tighter in there. And then I am just going to line up my um, my die. Now you can, and, and the people that even make these recommend using tape to line it up, so that's absolutely fine to do. Uh, just It's just a little extra step, but you know, use what you have. I just wanted to show you this option if it's something you're interested in. So as you can see, it's not gonna fall, and I can see the little bits of my design through the holes there, so I think I have it lined up pretty well. <clears throat> I'm not the best at these. I'm not very used to these types of stamps and dies that match because I usually just uh, just kind of cut them by hand. Maybe I'll put it in this way just to make sure I'm getting a good push through. <clears throat> and then another tip, and I'm going to show you what I did. I was having, the pieces were getting stuck in my die, in this die in particular because I'd never used it before. So I took a piece of wax paper just from the kitchen, this kitchen wax paper, you might call it something different in another country, but it's like it's like clear paper that's very waxy. And then I just I ran it through my die cutter with that with that die in there, so it could kind of deposit some wax in there and hopefully keep things from sticking, which it did. See, my stuff's not this little guy is the little train track is stuck, but look that fell right out. So you can see how well that cut and how it's all lined up. Hopefully, you can see that. <clears throat> and then when we take this out here. I'm a little froggy. It's first thing in the morning. You can see how well that cut that out, and actually, all the little pieces fell out because that because I had the um, I had cut through the wax paper the last time. So that's a little tip for you. And I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see that. Um, again, Local King is the maker of that. And there, I just wanted to give you an overview of the new magnet. Well, it's not new. It's been out for like <clears throat> I don't know. It's been. I'm sorry. I'm so froggy. It's been out for probably. A year and a half, two years, but it's it's quite useful. And um, mine came from Consumer Crafts. If you want to grab one for yourself, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below, and I will get back to you. And until next time, happy crafting.